test, test, testing. And that's what we're talking about today. All about test. Hey class, welcome back. Mr. G here, your online professor here at the, under, on YouTube. I'm here to go over, this is for teachers and for students, and this is how to beat test in general. Get the test beating mindset. Now, what does that mean? So if you have to take a test in anything, and that does include teachers, we have to take certification tests and different tests for throughout the course of our lives. We take tests and understanding the mechanisms, how testing works makes everybody's life easier. What is the goal of a test? The goal of a test is for us to figure out how much knowledge you know. I have been on a dozen curriculum writing teams. I'm an art teacher, so I don't have test manuals, test booklets for my curriculum, for my course. And that's that's a very common thing for art teachers. We don't have that kind of resource. We have to do it all of ourselves. So we have to have that mindset a lot sooner about how these tests work. Now for my students, you guys need to know how to take a test properly so that you don't just bomb a test. After all the work and time that you've put into the class so far, and then you get a test, you bomb a test. Uh, those that have an EOC or an EOG, which is the end of course test or the end of grade test, uh, these are all different names in different places but basically it's the big test that you have to take to pass the course if you spent all that time and you bombed it what was the time spent on so let's break down how to beat these things now i've got resources down below of where i've got my information but a lot of the stuff is the stuff that i live by the code that i go by when i'm writing tests or creating tests so all right first thing about testing in general for all people know the information now this is a blanket coverage of the information. If I brought up something about the French entity more or how glazing works or how is a hydrogen molecule different from an oxygen molecule, there's all basically you understand one is science, one is history, one is art. You understand that that is the blanket term. But what more do you need to know about each of these subject matters? You need to understand where they're pulling the information from. That is to be informed. You don't have to know every nut and bolt of everything that works together, but you do need a blanket understanding of what the topic is. And that leads to the next point. Number two, think like the teacher. So thinking like the teacher, the teacher who's giving you the information that the test is going to be built from or having an end of course test, those EOCs, EOGs, what are they pulling that information from? Most of the time, a standard, a teacher has to focus on a standard. The standard is the state derived curriculum the mandated things we all have to teach we have to teach this at the state level we have to teach this at a federal level those are the things that we have to teach by and i don't want to get political but know what those standards say because a lot of the stuff that you think is in there is not in there now one of my standards they they do a lot of blanket terminology for my stuff which is actually really nice to to write stuff by so here's an example of one um, we're engaging in an array of processes, media techniques, and technology through the experimentation, practice, and persistence. Now, then there's subcategories under a standard. So a standard has got bold print and then usually has subprint of more specific things that each of those standards should have. Uh, so like one of them is applying new information to existing knowledge and brainstorming plan, discover connections, and recognizing serendipity. That was a bad last one, personally. Let's go with the other one there, which is identify safe procedures for handling and working with materials and equipment. That's that's easy. So understanding how how to work with each of the materials that we're doing, and then from that, how to handle these things safely. Now, uh, if I'm dealing with a kiln for ceramics class, one, don't put anything in the kiln that shouldn't be fired. So don't put non-ceramic wear into the kiln. That's pretty blanket term. Thinking like a teacher is really, and you guys, if you've watched several of my videos, please watch more of the videos. If you've watched several of those videos, you understand the way that I talk, the way that I give you guys information. Understanding how that teacher thinks is really key to creating a, to understanding how to beat that test. How is that teacher normally talking to you? How are they gonna talk to you through the test? Now, if you have some teachers who are pulling testing information from a book, that makes your life harder. But here's the thing, if they're pulling stuff from a book, they've already pulled stuff from that book on worksheets, testing, test prep materials, these other things that they pulled information from. So yeah, they didn't write the test, but they gave you the source information of where they got the additional information. So if you're one of those 
teachers who's pulling this information from a test, keep that in mind for your students. Help them understand that this is the thought process that goes into the assessment. This is the thought process that goes into understanding how they're being assessed, how we're going to use information that they, uh, they've got, we put into their brains. How did we re-pull that out of there to make sure that they understood it? Knowing all these little facets makes your life easier and makes you understand how the knowledge is to be absorbed, how the knowledge is supposed to be used and applied. Uh, one of the things that I, I'm trying to push a lot of people into, or the transition from, basic old school school methodology does not work anymore. We are in a different age. School hasn't changed in 100 years. And understanding that the olden ways are not good. Uh, personally, I have a big hate against scantrons because being able to color in a bubble does not tell me anything. Did you read a test? Yes. Did you answer a question? Yes. Did you apply that knowledge from the question on a piece of paper where you bubbled in a circle? I got an issue with that. But having performance tasks, which is what I'm a big fan of, and I have my students, when I'm doing tests for myself, I'll do a ceramics test where they have to build a series of pieces and you have a clock amount of time. Uh, I am working on a whole great pottery throwdown. It's a British TV show, it's on HBO Max. I know a lot of people can't watch it right now, so I'm working on my own version of it. But I do that for my ceramics class where they have to basically do a throwdown challenge. They have to make those series of pieces. How can I assess their ability to take the information that they've garnered over the course of the term and applying that knowledge in practice? That makes a much more sound effect that they know how to make the, create the piece, they know how to use the different applications that we use in class and I can assess them on that and use a rubric to grade it by. That makes sense. It's kind of like 2B, but we're gonna call it number three. Most teachers in general, and this is a teaching professor thing overall, so this is for new teachers, veteran teachers, and students, y'all need to know this. We understand knowledge and concepts through two main, I don't want to say platforms, doctoral methodologies, higher, higher education people. There's two things that you guys need to hear. You've probably heard before, which is DOK and Bloom's taxonomy. These got these two forms and I'm going I'm to have them up on the screen here. Let's slide over just a little bit, put them right here. These two forms tell us how much thought is going into each of the questions, into the assessment, into the learning processes. What it's telling us is how you think at a certain level. Let's start off with Bloom's taxonomy. In here you have a pyramid scheme and it has six different levels. For this you have at the bottom you have remember, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. From the basic level, and this is going to be the same for the DOK which I'm going to get into a second here you hear information and you can recall certain things about it. I can show you a picture of a stop sign. On the stop sign, and we'll take it away, what color was the stop sign? Red, because we all saw red. You understand that, that you see it and I'm just asking you to look and remember one little thing about it. I'm not asking you really deep, meaningful questions about it. As we're getting up the level here, now we use the stop sign again. The stop sign has a purpose. What is the purpose of the stop sign? Now we're applying knowledge of what I'm asking you to what the question is. So now you're understanding how we're getting through these different processes. This is important for when you guys are taking a test because now you're understanding what language is being used to apply to the question. You have to apply the knowledge, why this is gonna be used. We're not just saying randomly what the point of it is. So. That's how we raise up the level. Now, the other version of this is called DOK, which is depth of knowledge. Uh, it was done by Mr. Norman Webb. Went to one of his symposium things. I think I fell asleep. It wasn't exciting. But you have the same processes kind of as blooms, but it's a little more refined to me just because instead of the six that you could choose from, now you only have four. So starting off on number one, which is recall. Then you have level two, which is skill and concept level three is strategic thinking and level four is extended thinking now in these this wheel chart you have a whole bunch of different verbiage that you can apply to how the learning process are done look at this stuff research some of the stuff understand what this stuff is because this tells you how our test is going to be written these are key words that make you understand how they're trying to grab information 
that they could apply to a test and how they can phrase a test question. That's why I want you guys to be aware of this stuff. Let's just look at number two. I'm just gonna go down a few of these words here. Graph, classify, separate, cause and effect, estimate, compare, relate. How are these two things together? If you remember uh, back in the 90s, I think, we had a bunch of worksheets that we had to do where you had a, two columns of words and you had to make you find which these words work together. That's level two. That's level two DOK, which is you're just trying to make these things work together and understand that if you have a car and you have a highway, the car goes on the highway. Okay, these are how these things work together. Now, level four is what I try and push for all the time. They, that upper level thinking, that's what we're going for. We're going for smart, intelligent students. We want these really in-depth questions. So we gotta think, use the brain. Those ones, much smaller list, but here's the basics. Okay, so we have connecting, synthesizing, applying concepts, critique, analyze, create, prove. So now, same as we did with the stop sign analogy that I gave you guys a minute ago, using something to where we're having to apply the knowledge that we've learned to the test question. These are a lot harder to write, but these are also better estimates and understanding of why a kid does how they think and how to get them to understand the knowledge a lot better. For ceramics class, if I want a DOK level four and I'm putting this into a test question, I'm gonna do a glaze question. Why? Because a glaze question gives us a lot of response into how things are gonna happen. What is the cause and effect relationship? But we also have to synthesize, we have to think ahead of what is gonna happen. What is the reasoning of why these things will change? All right, so let's take a cup here. So I got a cup, it's got a blue glaze that I used a white glaze to kind of uh, pipe and do some do some slip trails on. How are those two glazes going to mingle on the piece? So from this piece that I got here, as I went through the firing, they flattened out from the designs. And I knew that they would go more towards like a like mixing more in the in the in the way that they were applied because of the types of glazes they were. They were both low fire O5 glazes. And I knew that, but I also wanted to experiment with that in how far could I push that to get uh, just really kind of funky pattern designs across the piece. That is that upper level thinking. Same thing with my Kiranuki vase I did uh, a couple weeks ago at the, or months ago at this point. Um, putting, I set that one down. Putting crystal and gem glazes high on the piece, I knew that the piece was gonna run. Question was how much was it was gonna run? What I did was the gem pieces were the base coat and then I used a thicker glaze as the top coat. So when the two mingled, I knew that they would it would run down. How far down, it's kind of a test phase or how far down is this gonna go so it would take it all the way to the bottom. I knew that if I had more angle pieces cut into the piece that it would have it have more time to kind of hold on the glaze could hold on instead of dripping all the way off of the piece so i did this in a very strategic way i wanted to put angle the glazes so that they would go to the shelves and create this nice waterfall effect but at the same time i would get that nice run look at the same time so i got this uh cool wild river waterfall looking design pattern. I think it came out pretty good. Next, number four on this list, don't skip the basics. Don't skip the easy stuff. Now, this one is really important for kind of an overall concept of teachers. Don't forget to put some simplified questions into your test because you have to give something to the students to encourage them to know that, oh, I've got this. I can keep working towards the next one. And having those little pieces in that test overall makes the students work a little harder and work better to get a better score on that test. Now for my students, don't skip the easy questions and think that you got it in the bag just because you nailed a couple of them. You still got harder questions down the road, so make sure that you're combining both of that those mentalities of, I got this, I could do this, but I know it's a climb uphill. Make sure that you make it all the way to the top of that mountain. Last one here is be prepared. And I know that's kind of a reiteration of, of the first one is understanding the basic concepts, being prepared. Study a little bit before the test, study the day before, take that knowledge in and understand why the teacher's asking you these questions. Same thing with my teachers. Understand that you have to be flexible on the fly that j just because this one test that you're gonna give on a Friday because it's a Friday so we should give a test, might need to be a Tuesday next week. And you can tell that because some of the kids that come in on that Friday might have not come in because they knew that test was coming or you know for a fact that if I gave that test today, that kid would fail. But if I wait two days, Monday, do a brief review, 
Tuesday they come in, put something up on the screen to kind of ignite their brains and then give them the test, everybody's going to do better. You have to have that level of flexibility and level of being prepared to shift on those kinds of thoughts because that's what's going to give you a better result. Students, we want you guys to be successful. We want you guys to do well in class. We want you guys to, be, to pass. And teachers, you need to tell that to your students. You guys need to t let them know that they are they are here to not just be here and fill a desk. They're here to gain knowledge so they can make everything a lot better. And I definitely want to bring you guys up on a high note before we leave today, which is we all want to be successful. We all want to do great. And I know that I've been long in the tooth about some of these things, but that is the base goal at the end of the day. We want everybody to be successful and we want to beat every single test. We are in this together. We are not combatants. We are allies. Keep that in mind. Quick recap. Don't forget to know basic understanding of the test. Make sure you got your stuff together and that you're flexible on it. Understand how the teacher thinks is a very important thing. Don't forget to understand where the knowledge is coming from, how they're building these things up. And uh, I think the last one's knowing about standards. Sounds good to me. Understand those basic concepts. You guys will do fine on a test. Those teachers who build your own test, good luck to you. Use that in the applying of how to, be, how to build a test. Understand that you have to give a methodology. You have to give a reasoning why you're doing stuff. Again, I've gone over curriculum stuff where we kind of talked a little bit about this before. I never, never want to do a test that is very niche specific. I'm not giving specific artists names, dates, anything like that. I'm giving whole concepts because I want the students to walk away with the knowledge that they can apply to multiple things. Don't block yourself in. Don't close your mind to stuff. Keep it open. Keep it expressive. Be much better person for overall for that. All right, so wrapping up class like we always do. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and on various platforms. Get the message out to all friends, teachers, students that we possibly can. Educate the masses. That is my goal. That is what I like to do here. Don't forget, if you guys had a question, comment, or concern from today's class, raise hands in the comments below. Happy to answer those questions from my classmates. As always, I will see you guys next class. So until then, later, guys.